black Africans and African Americans always butt heads yeah. anyway. Yeah. That would be a perfect dynamic. So I went in yeah, there. Why y'all hate us? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Nigerian now. You need to talk to them. Why y'all? Hate, why do you hate Shannon on me? For what? No. Why do we? We don't hate. That's some bullshit. Nah, y'all do. Y'all be hating. No. Wait a y'all minute. Y'all be sneak tip hating. Wait. First of all, as me being raised here, mm-hmm. me being raised here, I protect both. First of all, some Nigerians, they do sometimes, Africans in general, some of them do think they're better than African Americans, which is bullshit. Right. Because it's not the truth, because Africans are treated like shit in Africa. Colonization. <laughs> yeah. England, France. That's why you speak in French, not because you're special. Yeah. <laughs> because they came and sat on your shit and said, you're going to speak what the fuck we speak. Right. The Dutch... All of that, all of them, Italian, all of those European countries came and colonized you, treated you like shit. I mean, you go to South Africa, white people are calling themselves Africans and they don't even look it. That's some gangster shit, don't you think? Right. I am from South Africa. No, you're not. You're <laughs> Dutch. You just didn't know when the fuck to leave. You see what I'm saying? This is, it's, it's fucked up. So that should tell you and what African Americans have gone through that fucking hell that they've gone through and still go through. How are you coming from that mentality and saying you thinking you better than them because you have an accent? Because for some reason, the the white society in America tends to oh Africa has an accent, it's a little different. It's like when you're British, like each said when you have a British accent yeah. and you're black. Hello, I don't know. That's what I'm doing. Ooh, that's why they get to play us. Listen, British black dudes are playing drug dealers. I thought Idris Elba was from Baltimore. <laughs> I thought he was. You know, he was like, yo, you motherfuckers don't understand. And then I'm watching BBC. You know, when I did The Wire, I studied um, the ghetto in <laughs> Baltimore. You sound like Lord Baltimore, motherfucker. What the fuck? What the fuck was that? And then this Driss guy, there's another Driss. Yeah. A snowfall. Yeah. I'm thinking this motherfucker's like, yo, cuz. And he's like, you know, I took him. You know. The fuck is this? You know, another because they I don't know what it is. Something about this is just my theory. Something about that black American accent. Hey, hey man, fuck that. <laughs> but hello. Oh, and we see we'll let Idris play that. Yeah. But then when he gets back to his normal self, we get to hear James Bond. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we don't want to hear that. It's something about that. I don't know. I think it's 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 just a little weird. It's like African Americans go through hell, but everybody copies African Americans. Yeah, right. Everybody does. All around, I've been to a lot of countries. You've been to a lot of countries. I've been to a lot. I've been to a lot of countries. You've been to a lot of countries. You so southern. He's like, I mean, I'll be, you know, I'll go. I've been to a lot of states. A lot of states. God <laughs> damn. I, mean, I go fishing over there. Yeah. Get it, so damn. And I hit my my RV. Out of, yeah. Like my grandma said, man, if you ain't got nothing to do, stay where you at. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 no, no, but listen, I'm saying Africa, when I've been to China, I perf- I actually performed. I was the first American to perform in Russia in 2018 in right. Moscow. I and, and black shit is everywhere. Hip hop. There's Russian hip hop. I was in Lithuania, went to a Lithuanian hip hop club. I was the only black dude there. And they were all grabbing their dicks. And I'm like this. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. That's our culture. Yeah. China, everywhere is hip hop. When I was in Japan, when I was in Korea, black people are copied. All that K-pop is just nothing but fucking a new edition. It's right. all black shit everywhere. African American, I think the African American culture is the strongest culture on the planet. Period. Because even Africans are going, yo, nigga, man, fuck all that shit, nigga. Really? <laughs> you sound stupid, man. This nigga got a lot of nerve, man. I, I was just saying, though, my nigga. Shut up. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Michael Blackson does it, but he's fucking around. Right. But these, there's do, there's people doing it. Right. I see they got these, um, Reality shows, these African like reality shows. And she's like, shit, that bitch, I know that bitch not talking to me like that. Well, really? The they fuck got is, what? They, got, they saying, got real housewives of Africa. They got shit like that now. Nigeria got <laughs> Nollywood and all that. Hell, it's the third largest movie. But they're acting like there's they're taking from um African American shit. Right. You know, a lot of them are taking it. Some people may not agree, but it's facts. And it's like why are you shitting on Africa? And every African is not shitting on African American. That's right, bullshit. Right. But they, it's like, it doesn't make sense. Right. Because African Americans are 
they're the, the, I mean, Africans are creative too, of course, right. but African American, that culture is the coolest shit on the planet. Right. Keep it 100. Hip hop, you know, just everything. It was, damn. Right. Jazz, blues, everything you create. African Americans created all of American right. music. It's all black. Right. Like, even country music, even though they complaining, like John Schneider from the Dukes of Hazard. What are you fucking still Joe Bo Duke? Motherfucker's yeah. wrong with you. He goes, oh, 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 what is it? Wait, oh, oh. Beyonce, boy, it's just like a dog pissing on everything. Shut up. It's black. Yeah. Country music is ours. It's black. I'm claiming it. And you're going to say, oh, good. You just come to the hee home, hee home, hee. Shut up. <laughs> you, you still white, white, white people take from old black, black men and black women and, and, and make it and then say, you stay out of goddamn. Look at the, look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How the fuck you going to have a, Hall of Fame, and we gotta wait to get inducted from the music the black people created. And you got a whole white fucking, well, we don't, we don't know. What? <laughs> Have you been to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Elvis's shit goes from here to the bottom. James Brown got, <laughs> That's a measurement a in James Brown talk. Eh. He got a little fucking, <laughs> yeah. he got, he got an uh, exhibit this big. It's literally, eh. <laughs> wow. That's it. This exhibit is that big. Chuck Berry. But Elvis goes, all the way down the hall. All the way down the hall. <laughs> Fucking all the way down the hall. Fuck out of here. Your career. Yes. Do you feel you've been blackballed? Do you feel that there have been opportunities that, w- that you should have or could have been presented, but there were obstacles placed in your way? Ah, <sighs> shit. Um, I don't think... <sighs> I've asked my agents to ask around. If I'm blackballed, I ask, say, please go ask around. Because first of all, one thing about Hollywood, they're not honest. People will be like, we loved you. And then they'll say, yeah, get rid of him. You know what I mean? Right. And I like, I try to surround myself with people who are honest with me. Right. I want people to, but I, people say, no, there's nothing you haven't, I said, did I say anything that was, cause if it's my act, I think that's unfair. I should be able to express myself the way How I want feel? to, but I don't think so. I ain't, I ain't fucking with my wife. I ain't flirting with no man. No man. I don't owe nobody no money. Not that you know of. I don't know. Not that I know. Of. I do know of. I ain't getting nobody <laughs> pregnant. No nothing. I'm right. always in my own lane, man. Right. But I don't think I've been blackballed. I I would hope not. Shit, you know. But I think that sometimes there's an intimidation to certain things. I think there's some intimidation. I don't know. I don't really want to dumb myself down for anybody. That just comes from that Nigerian pride, right. man. What you right. want to do? You pride. So could you have, do, do you, as you look back. Yeah. Um, you say you've been in the, uh, the comedy game for 27 years. Yeah. As you look back, mm-hmm. is there anything you could have done differently? Could you have marketed yourself differently? No, I don't think so, man. Cause now with the social media before it was everybody did the same shit. Oh yeah. You go to auditions, you try. You go to auditions, you go, you, you do, you do shows, you go on the road. It was the same kind of schematic, man. You try to rub elbows, you try to get invited to as much shit as you can, but now it's different. Now you can make it choose like you're not putting up any content. You could be doing a podcast, right? You could be now, I'm, but I'm doing all of that. I, I went along with the wind. I said, okay, right. let me start social media. I, I embraced that shit about six, seven years ago. I embraced it. I said, let me get off my ass and do it. And it yeah. worked for me. It really did work for me. It like revitalized the shit I was doing. But as far as like the Hollywood, Hollywood in, in, I'm not really in, in, I'm in, but not in, in. Right. It's like, how do you get there? Right. Then I hear all this creepy shit in order to do that. And you got like, I don't want to be there. Ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, it might be. I don't know if it's true or untrue, but it's always like, ah, uh, how do I get there? Right. You got to, ah, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, the, 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 what, you mentioned gatekeepers and you say they're, they're, you know, yeah. but is there, is there, you wish someone had opened the gate or given you a, yeah. a help lift God That would be up. great. I know people in positions that I've known for years that are like in position and they just fucking go, ah, eh, they just act like they don't know you anymore. I, I'm telling you, it's like, mm. cr- like straight transformation. Right. So this whole time, you was always that dude, just waiting, faking right. it till you make it. Right. And and so you go, oh my boy, he's a he's a, a showrunner right here. I've known him for years when we were coming up. Nothing. I've seen actors get a commercial and act like they don't know you. I said, motherfucker, that was Burger King. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Shit. I mean, I was a Seven Up guy for right. two years after yeah. Orlando Jones. But I was still the same guy because it's transient. That shit comes and goes. I was a seven up dude. I'm going to keep it 100. 
that's a that was a big moment to advertise for a product mm-hmm. in America. Yes. I know all the jingles of all the different, right? Doc B a pepper drink. I know all the shit. Now yeah. I'm like a seven up. What? Right. So even though I was getting shit, I still was that guy because that shit comes and goes. Godfrey, as I'm sitting here listening to you, yes. how were you able to like you can like in and out. You can have the accent. Nigerian, but you speak very American. I'm, I was born here. I don't give a damn. I was but, born. I but let me ask you a question what? because I, I I know a lot of people. Yeah, that came from other countries. Yes, when they're in their own home, they speak the native language. That's when they go outside, they talk about. What's up? Yeah, it's just it's sweet. It's cold. Did you did you did your parents have you speak Nigerian in home? No, my I'm gonna be honest. My parents, man. They got, they admit it. My mother say, yeah, we got, we were lazy. We didn't, we were supposed to teach you Igbo. We were speaking to you, you know, but we got lazy. They got a little lazy. Okay. I wish they would have like spoken because my sister knows the language yeah. when they're speaking because my parents would use broken English, pidgin English. And my sister knew when they were speaking straight Igbo because she was born there. She, 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 pigeon she, English. I don't know, but I know pigeon, pigeon told. <laughs> <laughs> Pigeon toe. I know about pigeon toe, but I, yeah, no, no, no. I know about, I know about stool pigeon. Yeah, I know about pigeon toe. I, I, I mean, so pigeon is like, you know, like they said, what are you saying? What are you doing? Making mouth. It's like when you hear Afro beats. Yeah, there's a lot of pigeon in that. Okay. I say, I be, what are you doing? Make it, you know, that's, that, it's like English. It's like patois. Okay. With the Jamaicans. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's English, but it's like, it's cut up and, you know, yeah. and it's like a way that they, I was just in Nigeria in December, which was great, which was fantastic. And, you know, a lot of Nigerian Americans get a lot of hard time from Nigerians that were born there. They say, you're not, the, you're not real, yeah, yeah, Americanized. I go, my parents can't, that's not their fault. Because, right. you know, there was a thing called the Biafra Wars in the 1960s. There was Biafra War. It was a tribal war. My Ebos were getting killed. Right. My parents, my father changed our name. My last name is Danchima. But our name was Chima. But my father changed it so we could survive and get the fuck out of Nigeria. It was right. Biafra War. That's why I was born here. Right. What's really fucked up is that Nigerians will say, not all of them, but someone will say, you're not really Nigerian. I say, yes, I am. If my parents are Nigerian, I come out Nigerian. Right. Period. Right. When you see an Asian man, no matter where they are, you go, look at that Asian guy over there. Right. You connect them to their continent. Yeah, they don't say just because he's born in the States. Or and and <laughs> I know I know some Southern Asian. I, I'm Chinese. I'm like, I'm, I'm from Texas. But you'll still say, oh, the Asian guy right. is from Texas. Right. They already connect them. But for some reason, when it comes to the African life, or the, it's like all of a sudden you're not... I'm not African, but you believe the white South African, though. Right. You believe the white guy that's African. But right. I, who have the genes, I, just because I was born here, or British African, they'll give a, a British Nigerian more respect than an American Nigerian. There's a lot of Nigerian Americans, Ethiopian Americans, Congolese Americans. I, they're here. We are still African. I don't care that I, I don't know the language. Oh, so I'm still African. Now, if you were to ask me, are you Nigerian? I'd be like, hell no, I ain't Nigerian. I'm American. Then I'd be like, how can you say that? <laughs> well, how can you, you, you embarrassed us all? Why you are Niger? You, how can you, all your mother ain't built? See? Yeah. So fuck that. They went both ways, huh? They wanted both ways. So I'm glad I went back to Nigeria. I, I hadn't been there since I was a, te- uh, a teenager and my parents are gone now, you know, which is crazy. My mother passed away first. Mm-hmm. Mother passed leukemia, so yeah. ah, Sorry to hear the that. cancer thing. My parents married forty something years. Mm-hmm. That shit was crazy, and to see your mother, your your first superheroes were your parents, your mother, your father. They gave you everything. You know, if it weren't for them leaving Nigeria, surviving a Biafra war, I wouldn't even be sitting here in Club Shay Shay if it weren't for them and mm. that hard work, right. busting their ass. And I always thank God for that. Like they would, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing comedy, right. none of that shit, and. My father died after that, mm-hmm. you know, and to see my mother, that was crazy to see my mother, um, like tell me that she has, she's like, has can't, that shit was, I don't ever want to live that shit again, but that was crazy. Your mother who's strong and boom, boom, boom. And then she's in and out of hospitals and then she had six months to live, but she lived the eight extra, wow. you know, awesome. and my parents renewed their vows at the time. And then my father has a very strong voice. Godfrey, come here. That's my dad. Because I always say he sounded like the Lion King. Yeah. Godfrey, go yeah. yeah, my father. And my father always had a strong voice, strong voice, strong voice. 
But then when my mother was passing, was going to pass away, my mother, my father, when he knew it was about that time, that was the weakest I ever heard my father's voice. He's like, he was just, it was just weak. And I said, damn. And then she died while I was doing the seven up commercials. That's mm -hmm. what happened. She died right in the middle of it. And I got it, I kept it to myself. Cause I don't like that attention. Right. I don't know if you've had people mm -hmm. pass on you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, shit, my, cause my cousin called crying, bawling. And my brother, my poor brother, Daniel, he had to see, he saw both my parents go mm. in front of him. Right. And so my father lived along another like 10, 10, 11 years. But every time I would visit my father in Chicago, you could see his, it's just empty without my, without my, my mother mom, gone. Yeah. You, it just, he, part he of just, him died when she Man. Died. And I, and they say my father was always healthy. My father would never caught colds. He was always eating healthy and he just went. I think it was broken heart. Mm -hmm. So, and you, and, and, and what freaked me out was when my father passed, you know, you got to go see the, see him in, you know, see him at the funeral home. Mm -hmm. I had a show at my sister's alma mater, Loyola University. Right. I had to, I had to do a show at, at her university, a college show. And then I had to see my father's body a couple months, a couple blocks away. Right after I had to get off and go, good night. And then go and see my father's body. Just my dad, just there in his traditional garb. That shit. Ah. Yeah. So, but I thank God if it weren't for them, you know, I wouldn't even, and they saw some of my success, which right. was great. That's it awesome. was great. Cause my father was a CNN guy mm -hmm. and I got to get on CNN. Cause that's all he watched. Right. He thought I was the greatest thing in the world because that was when Michael Richards, remember my, Michael Richards from Seinfeld snap yeah. used the N word. Yeah. I was, I was around Michael Richards about a week before that. I used to do shows with that crazy motherfucker. And then they called me CNN. Anderson Cooper show was like, God, they want you to come CNN and talk about the Michael Richards shit. And I got on there and talked about the Michael Richards shit. My father saw it and went crazy because that's all he watches. Right. He says, I, you, I called all the Nigerians in Chicago, you were on CNN, you know, shit like that. So all my, my successes, even though I was a pre-med psych major and I wanted to get into psychiatry and, but once I decided to be a comedian, you know, for, and, you know, you know, your friends are like, well, at least get your degree for, and then you right. can, you know, right. just in case you fail, you can boom. But, um, yeah, I ended up doing okay. You were born in Nebraska. Yeah. Did you have a bunch of black friends? Cause I, I didn't, I was born in Nebraska. I was a baby. I grew up in Chicago. So you had a bunch of black friends. Bunch of black <laughs> friends. <laughs> I had all my friends and you know, my friends were, I had friends, African American, of course. Yeah. Nigerians, Indians, Koreans. Okay. Cambodians. Yeah, wow. Vietnamese, Laos, Chinese, Polish. We were, it was very immigrant oriented in that area okay. uptown uptown area that's the most integrated area in chicago okay so my friends were immigrant kids and african-americans of right. course and white americans and yeah so i had a the only time i got culture shock was when i went to all white schools that's when it was not well i don't know if it's culture shock but it was just like racism and all that shit right. being called n-word and shit i was called n-word in class english class my honors english class in high school they called me n-word it was like three you know it's always three against one so they were like they call me, and it was like they they whispered it, fucking nigger, like that, <laughs> fucking nigger, fucking nigger. I was like, I was like, me, <laughs> fucking nigger. Yeah, you're fucking nigger. I was like, me. I'm looking, like, me? and they're like, yeah, fucking you, nigger. I was like, what the fuck? And my teacher was black. Mrs. What'd you Scarborough. say? She, you know, when I look back, I go, she probably was having problems with her, the faculty herself. Right. She didn't say shit. I was just like, oh, fuck, you're fucking danger. I thought, and they said it just like that. You're a fucking danger. And so I thought they were mispronouncing Nigerian. I didn't know. No, nah, they I said, there's only one G. <laughs> the G is soft. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what I was going through. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.